Hello, this is Darren Gray and I'm doing a developer let's play of Broken Bottle. Broken Bottle is a game I made a few years back for the 7 day roguelike challenge. Uh, and it's a sort of post apocalyptic game where you play an alcoholic in a sort of abandoned mine shaft. Uh, let's just get started on the game. You can see some of what's about. Uh, developer let's play, for those that haven't seen one before is where a developer lets plays their own game and talking a little bit about some of the design things going on in it etc etc okay so this is the start of the game confronted with a bit of text this world it used to be something special I remember grass and trees and people laughing now now it's a grey washed out place a dim and dreary existence with only sharp bursts of pain to remind us we're still alive how little I care these days it feels like I'm looking at life through the bottom of a broken bottle of whiskey the drips of brown liquid blurring all the light and colour, the cracks of glass distorting figures into ugly, jagged shapes. God, I need a drink. So this is you, this little at sign, moving about. Uh, if we go into my inventory, uh, I've got some stims, a bottle of vodka, a bottle of whiskey, and some bullets. And I've got a blunt knife and a revolver. Uh, this is some of my stats over here. Uh, level, strength, life, stamina, and groggy, indicating my current uh, intoxicated state. If I bump into this G here, it's a guard, he, uh, he soldier, boss of suit, look sharp! Uh, and he gives a little bit of backstory to the game, your quest, what you're kind of doing here. Um, and the idea is that you've been given a gun and two bottles of spirits and your mission is to try and find the surface. And it's considered to be a bit of a suicide mission. So, let's see what there is to do in this game. Now, the, ran the levels are randomly generated each game, uh, using fairly simple techniques, to be perfectly honest. Uh, nothing very special. Um, so, let's see. The mines. These uh, higher areas have been sealed off for a long time by the military because of the radiation. But a lot of holes have been dug around, so they sure ain't empty. I've not been up here before myself. But I've heard some stories that it ain't a nice place to be. Animals, bandits, piranhas, junkies, they all infest this dirt hole. I'd better watch myself. So, we've got some enemies up here, an R and a D, and R is a black rat. Wherever we go, they follow. For millennia, they reveled in the filth we create, and even after the end of the world, they feed in our putrescence. Lovely! Feral dog. Years of neglect have turned this once domesticated animal wild. Now they hunt in packs, feeding off the weak. Okay, so if I will move towards them, uh, I can attack them. Just moving with the arrow keys here, or you can use the numpad, which lets you move to... Ah, oh, shit! Oh, I've died. It is a roguelike. You die. Okay. Fuck. Um, okay, let me let me try that one again. Whew. Bill! Welcome to the world. Come, let's go. Uh, so I've got a different level this time. Uh gonna attack that dog. Uh it is actually quite a, a difficult game to start off in. Enemies can overrun you. You do have to keep an eye on oh shit eye on your health, consider tactical positioning, that sort of thing. Um I believe roguelikes have an important role to play. I'm just gonna take a stim to restore my health. Roguelikes have a particular role to play in uh in really getting you into the game. You've got permadeath and you've got procedural content, so every every game is new and fresh, and every decision really matters. And it means that you care about what happens to your character. It's often been said that seeing a character, you know, having your 27th level dwarf barbarian die in a roguelike is so much more emotionally affecting than seeing a pre-written character die in a cutscene in a, in a modern AAA game. And you know a lot of roguelikes don't bother to try and have serious themes or anything, but you still get very emotionally invested in them. Permadeath and procedural content combine together to make this very, uh, very gripping experience that makes you really care about your character and really identify with your character in a way most other games just cannot achieve. So I wanted to go further with that in Broken Bottle and make a character that you would really feel for. And it does it something different from most roguelikes in that you'll see that a lot of these descriptions are written in the first person. Uh, I see an item here. I strike the feral dog. Um, I hit the rat. 
Uh, oh, I've had a little level up. I will increase my strength. It has some basic RPG mechanics in the game, mostly to add a little bit of flavour to the progression as you go through. Oh, shit! Loads of uh, J's. These are stim addicts. Uh, stim addict. Lots of people give up on this life, handing themselves handing themselves over to the joys that only narcotics can provide. Who can blame them when everything else is pain? This junky skin is pockmarked with open sores, and bones seem to jut out from her anorexic flesh. She looks at me with her vacant eyes, and suddenly the light of greed arises. Now, I want to... Uh, oh dear. I'm gonna I'm gonna fire at them actually because three stim addicts at once is quite difficult. What I'm gonna do as well is have a little drink because this will help. I want to show some of the drinking mechanics that are in the game. So if I use this, ding, I now go from sober to groggy. And if I go again, oh, I have another drink. I'm now drunk. And if I look at this junkie again, oh. Though it said before stimatic, and now it says junkie. And the description has changed to This useless piece of trash is no better than an animal, feeding off base desires. She's probably better off dead. So this this changes. The things like um the description of when it dies, the junkie drops to the ground bleeding like a stuck pig. That's different uh when you're drunk compared to when you're sober. I get some stims from those junkies. Jolly good. Uh, there's a leather jacket here. Should I equip it? Uh, armor 3, stamina cost plus 1. Compared to my current one, yes, that's much better. Some of the items have a bit of randomization to their stats. It's mostly to add a bit of variety in an otherwise short, low content game. Uh, there's a stamina system in the game whereby attacking, uh, attacking an enemy cost a certain amount of stamina. So the basic action of attack will cost you a certain amount of stamina. And that replenishes reasonably quickly, but in a sustained fight, you'll uh, quite easily run out of stamina. Uh, and the main way of replenishing stamina is by drinking. So there is a kind of uh, an idea in the game that drinking uh, gives you power. It gives you the ability to fight, to kill things, to spread blood. A dagger, which I shall uh, definitely better than my current one. So, uh, alcohol plays a part in the mechanics of the game. What also happens is that if you don't drink alcohol, your alcoholic state will decrease, uh, and it will go from groggy down to sober, and then start hitting into withdrawal and severe withdrawal, uh, and that. Uh, that has a big effect on gameplay. When you are in a withdrawn state, you will ooh machete. Uh, when you're in a severely withdrawn state, you will start to uh, get little fits and attacks upon yourself that will drain your stamina further. They in particular drain your stamina, which has a serious issue in that it uh, it, it leaves you less powerful for fights. So. In general, the, the whole system is set up to make you less powerful unless you drink. And it's an important kind of message in the game because you end up um, you end up becoming reliant on alcohol to survive, and that's kind of what the game's about. So I've just gone through the game a few levels there, and I'm on to the next level here, which is the caves. A little bit of story text here. I hear a distant, high-pitched laugh, a giggle echoing through the cavernous halls. Several voices chant in unison. Na 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 na. Oh shit. Piranhas. The war left a lot of orphans behind, and in our violent society more are made all the time. And who can look after kids in an age like this? Hard enough to feed yourself. So they're left homeless, roaming the streets in the mines, begging for scraps or stealing what they can to survive. Some of them band together into groups, marking out their own territories, attacking anyone that comes near. This is the last thing I need right now. Fucking piranhas. Piranhas are one of the more interesting parts of the game. They're based off uh, Peruvian street gangs. Uh, they've got this problem in Peru of, of bands of homeless children coming together and attacking tourists en masse and, and just grabbing everything that the tourist has. Uh, so the local police uh, shoot them. 
and that is seen as wrong by the tourists, but at the same time they don't like being attacked en masse by the, these gangs of street kids that, that you know you can't really do anything about, you can't hit them, they're only kids. Uh, There's an interesting moral dilemma of how do you deal with uh, a, a sort of opposition like that. And I want to play with that idea a little in this game, and if we find some piranhas, hopefully you'll see how they're implemented in this and how how the game plays with that idea. Oh shit, okay. Here we go. Piranha. Young girl. As the large bright eyes shine out from the small grubby face, the young girl is dressed in rags, grime covering every inch of her soft skin, her hair sweeping backwards in untended knots. And I've just seen on the log here, the girl grabs at me and steals my bottle of vodka. The young girl grabs at me and steals my stimps. They're stealing my stuff. They're actually taking my possessions away. My inventory is looking slimmer than it was. How do you get those things back? Well, if you try and attack them, I'm just trying to move in, or try and click on them. It says, I raise my hand to attack, but no, no, I won't. I've done enough bad things in life, I don't want to kill a child. Now that's what happens, uh, and if you try and chase them, they run away. And they can get stuck in a corner like that, but you still won't attack it. Unless you have a drink. If I take a swig, I put the bottle to my lips and sip slowly. It hurts, but I want more. And I've got to take a few drinks there. I'm now at drunk status. And if I hover over this, what was a young girl, now it says piranha instead of young girl. And the description has changed. These goddamn piranhas drive me fucking mad. They reach for their dirty thieving fingers and then run away before you can lay a hand on them. Little bastards. And if I now go up to this piranha and attack it, Bloody piranha shudders and her small body falls to the ground. Ugh. And here's my things. Here's the things that that young girl stole, which I have now reclaimed by getting drunk and attacking her. So, when you're sober, and if you see she just tries to run away, when you're sober you can't attack them. Drinking gives you the power to attack and kill children like that. Uh, now attacking them does bring down your sobriety state. Um, but yeah, it's the only way to recover your items. Is to, to drink, to uh, be able to attack them. Um, so that's an important part of the game. That you're left with this, this choice. Do you let what are in the game children attack you and sort of uh, steal your things. They don't actually hurt you, they just steal your things. It's, it's playing on that whole sense of possession. Uh, for some reason we feel worse in games about people stealing our objects than they are about damaging our health bar. Um, so it's playing on this player's sense of possession and, and also uh, asking you the question, will you take a drink? Will you use this, uh, this mechanic in the game to be able to attack them? Um, and it's interesting the role that alcohol then plays in the game because it has an imbalanced power structure. It gives you, it restores stamina for combat. It 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 makes you uh, makes you able to attack things that you wouldn't normally be able to attack. It has a power to it. Uh, if you drink, then the whole game system suddenly becomes more simple. Uh, the the sort of flow. Oh shit. Um, the the flow of the game goes differently. Uh, oh, oh shit. Alright, she's stealing my thing, I'm not gonna attack her. Um another thing that happens is that uh if you go without uh alcohol and you do get these withdrawal things and you also get little story flashbacks. Now I can actually trigger these by having a lot of drinks to put myself into a catatonic state. Um, is she coming to attack me? I think she is. Oh dear. I feel bad. Um, you get these, these flashbacks and I'll just show you a couple of these. Uh, they normally happen when you are severely withdrawn and it will lead to you kind of uh, collapsing in the game um, but if you drink a lot like really overdo it then you also here we go 
Uh, you also collapse and have these, these dreams come back to you. I see a woman, she's shouting. I shout back, but she won't listen. She never listens. Who is she to judge me or what I do? I try to make her shut up. I'm angry and I grab her. She resists. And there's a progression to these sequences, which are sort of the backstory of the character in the game. And you only see them if you take the right gameplay steps to trigger them. So, here we go. She's lying on the ground, blood spilling from a gash across her head. Shards of glass spread across the carpet around her. In my hand is a broken bottle, crimson drops on the jagged edge of mixing with the dripping amber contents. A young girl with dark hair comes into the room. She sees me. She screams, her face wild with fear and horror. She runs away. What have I done? Uh, here's another. The sky is on fire. Sirens are wailing and everyone is screaming, running about. In the distance I see a cloud rising, a thick grey column of smoke expanding out with a giant white oval of dust. There's a military truck loading people on. I clamber forward, but there is no room. I shove a woman out of the way. I have a place. She lies crying on the ground as the truck speeds off. I'm safe. And there's all these sort of guilty memories that resurface as you go through the painful stages of sobriety in the game. Um, I'm going to leave that piranha alone. And yeah, it goes on. There's a few uh, location linked bits of text, but the majority of the text in the game is actually linked to choosing to drink or not to drink. And there's another little flashback that comes just through uh, following the story in the game. I'm going to leave it there. That's been Broken Bottle. Uh, the game is a bit longer than this, it has a, an ending to it. Um, and the interesting thing is, is the kind of the power struggle between whether or not you choose to drink in the game. And it is two different games depending on whether you drink or not. Two two very different games. And the idea is to reflect on alcoholism and to have a very uh, broken anti-hero in the game that you are never at any point made to feel sorry for. And kind of you're put in this role and and. Ask, and you know, you see yourself whether with these choices you actually would choose to drink or not yourself. Which I find kind of interesting to explore. It's not the most perfect implementation, I think. Interface-wise, it certainly needs some improvement. Um, but uh, it's an interesting little game, all the same, in my opinion. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I will have some more videos of some other of my games out in future. Good night.